record our whole meeting, eh? Why don't I press record and then you'll have a tape as a kind of souvenir? Is there room on the tape that's in there now? I nodded. I said, you have to press play and record at the same time. Shall we sing together, Daniel? We could choose a song and sing it together. I'm not going to get for clamps, Diane. And then, if you ever need to, you could play it back really loudly for yourself. Then it'll drown out any voices you don't want to hear, like bullies at school. Grandma tutted loudly. David Bowie whispered to me, and it might drown out all the tuts as, and it might drown out all the tuts as well. I laughed at that and stopped myself in case Grandma heard. Is there a piano in here? They said there would be. Ah, there we are. Suddenly, David Bowie was up on his feet and sauntering off across the room towards the battered upright piano. He lifted the dark wooden lid. Come over here. What shall we sing? I wouldn't say it out loud. Suddenly I felt so shy I had to write it down. I took a piece of paper and a pencil from my satchel and wrote down that we should sing the song from the film, the one we just watched. He grinned. Easy! But come and sit down here and help me. I need your help singing this, Daniel. The thing is, most people's voices sounded really horrible to me. I found them painful to listen to. But the way David Bowie spoke then, his voice was vibrating inside me. It made me feel calm and excited at the same time. The piano was really old. The keys were yellow and some looked broken. He put his hands on the keys and when he tried a few chords, one key went wobbly and made a dodgy noise. A dodgy noise. He laughed and moved his, moved his hands along the keyboard to find a bit that would play. Then he started the song. He played and sang to me. When he got to the, when he got to the line that usually has little girl in it, he sang wizard boy. And then he got me to sing with him. He actually got me to sing out loud with him. He made me feel brave, and he freed my tongue. Hey! Hey, you've got a good voice, Daniel, he told me, pausing between verses. You see, the magic will only work if we sing together, because you're a green-eyed part wizard. The magic will work only if you help me sing. And I sang all the louder after that. We drowned out Grandma in her rustling newspaper and her slurping tea. When we finished our song, David said, before I go, I'll write out the words of the song for you because I changed them a bit then. And I think I prefer this new version. Do you have another piece of paper? I searched around in my satchel for a scrap of paper for David Bowie. Then he said, music's very important, you know. It's essential, in fact. All of a sudden, he looked very serious and incredibly wizardly. I'm going to do something with this music now. I stared at him. I had absolutely no idea what he was going to do next, and I was hanging on to every word. Can you see it, David asked. The music is all around us. The song we just played and sang together, it's swirling and glittering around us in the air. I looked and I could almost see it. That was dust in the air, wasn't it? This was just an old storeroom used for chairs and a piano and gym equipment 
and us being in here had stirred up all the dust. It was dancing in great circles and loops in the air, with the last of the late afternoon sun slanting through the huge windows. Can you see the music, Daniel? Can you see the music, Daniel? I concentrated hard on his words, and then all at once I could see it. Then it wasn't just old dust floating about. It was like tinsel and glitter in the air. Brilliant and silver. And it was more than that. It was gold. This was stardust. This was stardust. I'm going to make something out of it, David said. Something rather special. What? I asked, looking straight at him. A magic face, he said. An invisible magic face. Like the one I'm wearing now. I had no idea what he was on about. Here, he said, I'll give you this one. He reached up with both hands and put them to his smiling face. He covered it and then it seemed like he gave a little tug. His face came away in his hands. I drew back slightly. The face underneath wasn't smiling. It looked less certain, much less happy and confident. It blinked and looked worried. He held out his former face in both hands and gave it to me. Here it is, he said, my invisible face. Do you see it? I took it very carefully. It was light as a feather. He looked uncomfortable and almost scared with his true face on, on show. Put it on, Daniel, he told me. It's magic. And so I did. It felt strange. Fine but strange. Then David said, I always feel afraid, just the same as you. But I wear this magic face every single day. And it doesn't take the fear away, but it makes it feel a bit better. I feel brave enough then to face the whole world and all the people. And now you will too. I sat there in his magic face, looking through the eyes at David Bowie, and it was true. I did feel better. After a while, I put, my hand, I put up my hands and started to take it off. It was, impor it was important. He would want it back. But David stopped me. No, no, he said, reaching out a hand. It's okay, Daniel. You can keep that one. You can have that one for yourself. I sat there breathing slowly, my eyes wide, staring at him. I could keep it? I'm going to make myself a new one, David said. A brand new face. Right now. It's what I always do. His hands were reaching out into the glimmering air, stirring that gold stardust. I'm going to use all the music we created here today. You can watch me, he said. Look. He held out his hands and moved his fingers very gracefully and slowly, as if he was swimming deep under the sea. Can you see the silver glitter and golden stardust? It's all still here. It's dancing, dancing all around us in the air. It's a ballet. 
The room is filled with it. Watch this, Daniel. I watched as he started to make another magic face. He drew strands of glittery substance out of thin air, out of nothing at all. Over his shoulder across the room I caught a glimpse of Grandma. Her headscarf was poking over her newspaper. She was watching us. Just for a second, she looked over her paper to see what was happening. I caught her eye, a tiny flash of green. She shook her head and looked back down. David was drawing together all the gold into ribbons, and he was moving now, walking into the middle of the room. He stood over, he stood, stood over an anvil that only he and I could see. Come over here and watch, Daniel. He made me stand on a, on, on a wooden bench so I could get a better view as he hammered away at that anvil. He hammered and hammered the music into shape. He molded it gradually into the shape of his own face. He worked like a true craftsman, perfecting and fashioning it, and I watched it all. He took his time, then at last he smiled. It was finished. He blew on it to cool down the new invisible face. He blew on it to cool down the new invisible face. Then he took it in both hands and put it on. And he looked so relieved and pleased. He smiled again. He turned that brilliant snaggletooth smile on me. Now we're both, now we both, we've both got invisible magic faces, Daniel. We can both see through them perfectly well, and no one would know where even wearing them, he said. It was the first time I felt safe in my whole life. It was magic. It was magic that really worked because he was a wizard. He was grinning at me. You have to wear it for as long as you want to or need to, said David. You see, I'm always afraid as well, just like you are, but this is how you can feel brave in the world. We sat there looking at each other through our invisible masks. Then suddenly my grandma was folding up her newspaper noisily. Come on, Daniel. You've been ages. We have to get going. CNA will be closing soon. David ignored her and whispered to me. Just because people pretend not to just because people pretend not to see magic doesn't mean it's not real. It simply means they don't have our eyes. I nodded. He took the paper and stared and started writing down the lyrics to the song in funny loopy handwriting. Daniel, 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 Grandma was clopping over in her high-heeled boots. Are you listening to me? You've taken up quite enough time. Oh, David suddenly gasped and jumped to his feet. He went striding back to the door. My heart lurched. I thought he was leaving suddenly without saying goodbye. I almost forgot, he said, opening the door. Then he fetched something from the corridor. It was a huge furry creature. What's that, a toy? Grandma scoffed. We don't have room for that at home. What's that, a toy? We don't have room for that at home. It was the, it was the fox terrier from the movie, one of the heroes of the film. It was a life-sized version. He's yours, said David. I brought, I brought him for you because he's brave and loyal and I thought you could do with his help. There was a blue silk scarf around the fox terrier's throat, which David carefully removed and then hung around my neck. There you go, Daniel, he said, and passed me the furry, pup, the furry puppet. That's everything you'll need. Grandma tutted. That'll be fun, carrying that thing on the tube with his, with his dratted ghetto machine as well. 
David looked her dead in the eye. Thank you so much for bringing Daniel all the way to see me. I know things can't be easy for you. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you both. I'm not... I'm gonna... I'm gonna finish this without... I'm gonna do it. <sighs> she... She wouldn't hold his gaze. She gulped and grabbed my arm. Come on, Daniel. I want to buy this frock. There's hardly any time left. Just before she dragged me away, David Bowie reached out his hand and high-fived me. No one had ever high-fived me before. Nine years old. No one had ever... Then suddenly we were back out in that corridor. There was less noise because nearly everyone had gone home. Grandma, I said, twisting her grip in her grip because I felt we had been rude and done it all wrong. We hadn't said goodbye to David politely or properly. He had given me these amazing gifts, and I hadn't even thanked him. Shush, said Grandma. You've had quite enough attention for one afternoon. It makes you go giddy. We went out in the dark, snowy yard and heading for the street before I realized he hadn't finished writing out the words to his song for me. At least I had it on tape. I had the whole thing on tape. And I had the fox terrier in my arms as we sat on the bus and then the tube train into the center of London. I was wearing David's blue silk scarf, and I, and I was wearing his invisible face. I wore it standing by the changing rooms of C&A's ladies' wear department at Grandma as Grandma tried dresses on. It was warm and noisy and stuffy in that shop, and my head was ringing. After about a million years, it was time for us to catch the train back home. Black Star. She hadn't found a dress that pleased her, and she wound up buying something that she wasn't quite sure flattered her. Grandma sat in the train compartment looking flustered and cross. Shipping trips, shopping trips often went like this, with her never quite finding the thing she really wanted. She had two spots of red on her cheeks like she was over warm or felt upset. I sat with my dog puppet wearing my scarf and my magic face and I was absolutely beaming. I was singing to myself quite loudly. When the man came by to see our tickets, he looked surprised at my singing, and then he grinned at me. Merry Christmas! Someone's happy! He, he, he clipped our tickets. Grandma tutted, and he left. Then she was brushing down her pink fur coat. Oh, look at this! Look at the state of my beautiful fur coat. It's got nasty stuff on it. It's got glitter on it. Just look, she glared at me. It was true. In the smoky yellow light of the train in the smoky yellow light of the train compartment, Grandma was definitely glittering as she sat opposite me. It's off that thing, that horrible fox thing he gave you. Look at it. It it's covered in glitter. Oh, who would have who would give a child such a stupid messy present? She scratched and rubbed at her coat in frustration. It was weird about the glitter, really. I wasn't sure where it had come from. Maybe David had sprinkled it on the dog before he gave it to me, gave him to me. But then it had been falling through the air in that side room, hadn't it? Hadn't it? We'd created it by singing together, David had said. We had sung together, and because we were both part wizards, we had made the magic start working. There was stardust as well as tinsel in the air. I had seen it with my own green eyes. If you don't stop singing, Daniel, I'm going to grab that horrid fox off you and throw him out of the window. No, I said, and clutched my sparkling new friend tighter.
I stared back at Grandma through my invisible face. She sighed and suddenly looked exhausted. You'll see eventually when you get older. You'll look back on today and think it was a real waste of time. You'll see what a boring, awful time you put your grandma through. You're going to see a daft puppet film you've seen before, talking to that silly man. That, that poppin' Jay. You'll be embarrassed eventually about all of this. When you're as old as I am, Daniel, you'll see that dreams like this are daft. No one will ever remember this Bowie person. <laughs> That's not true, I said. That's not true. You'll be embarrassed in the future. You sang with... You'll be embarrassed in the future. You sang with him. That awful song. You'll, you'll feel such a fool about all of this and you'll never be able to tell anyone about it. You'll be so embarrassed. Eloise Hawking, anybody? She laughed then. Ha 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 ha. Daniel. I just looked out of the window, watched the snow flurrying past, and smiled. Because after that, I changed. I never was that same boy again, the boy who wouldn't talk or look anyone in the eye. After that, I would sing at the top of my voice and I'd make my own words for songs just because I felt like it. And I would look everyone right in the eye because I had to check out if they were wizard or part wizard, didn't I? That afternoon, just before Christmas, David Bowie had freed my tongue at last and stopped me looking down at the floor. He made me believe in the magic that's happening all the time. You see, he really was a wizard. And then it was over. I've never forgotten it, Black Star. If nothing else, I once sang a duet with David Bowie, like Freddie Mercury did, like Mick and Mick Jagger and Bing Crosby and Lulu. And even now, if I see anyone with green eyes, or just one green eye and one blue, I look at them and think, that's a wizard. Years later, I cried when I heard he had passed. I've told, I've not told anyone this story for years. I used to tell it to people. I used to love telling it. Then I started getting reactions like, that's just a stupid story. Fancy believing in an, in, in an invisible mask. Fancy believing in the Goblin King. But I do. I really believe in David Bowie and his invisible magic face. I think you do too, don't you? I've got my fox terrier puppet at home. Some of the glitter has rubbed off his fur over the years, of course, but there's still some there. He still looks like he could protect me bravely. I still have the blue silk scarf David put around my neck, and I still keep the magic face, of course. This is it now. I'm wearing it. Look. Hare Krishna. Namaste. Aloha. Hallelujah.